familiar to us from our LTE experiences, but this is sort of showing a non-standalone configuration for 5G. And as you can see, the familiar components, the mobility management entity, serving gateway, packet gateway, so the Evolve packet gateway configuration here, and the policy control, and also the home subscriber server for the subscriber database. But one thing you will notice here is a separation of user plane and control plane functionality. So as far as the serving gateway and the packing gateway is concerned, these user plane functions are isolated from the control plane functions of the serving gateway and the packet gateway up here. And part of this is configuring the architecture to move more gracefully, if you like, into the 5G core uh, configuration in the, in the future. So this is all user plane. We have the data network over here, the APN, access point name, and then we have the external bearer interface, and then we have our usual S1 user plane interface. This could be terminated in the secondary node for split bearers and could also be terminated in the master node for LTE bearers such as Volti bearers as an example. The control plane again interfaces to the LTE node in this particular case because there is no control plane from the MME to the 5G node in non-standalone and we still provide the usual EPC NAS, non-access stratum signaling. Looks like it's going directly here from the MME to the, to the UE, but of course it has to go over the S1 MME, then it gets put onto an RRC message, and the RRC message actually carries it as an encapsulated form inside the RRC message down to the UE over the radio link. But this is more of a sort of a virtual logical connection, if you like, between the MME and the UE, and the UE and the MME as well. Mobility, as far as handover from LTE to LTE, is still handled in the same way between the MME and the serving gateway, and of course the, the E node B as well. Any 5G mobility, in other words, a uh, primary secondary cell change from one 5G cell to another 5G cell, still in the secondary node, um, that type of mobility, again, is triggered by 5G and by the 5G personality of the, of the user device, but is managed by the 4G node, by the 4G node communicating with the target secondary node, if the, a secondary node, an, an additional secondary node is, uh, is involved, and then configuring resources for that change of, of primary secondary cell. So those enhancements that we see for NR support in non-standalone are the separation of the control plane and the user plane in, the higher data rates that can be supported with 5G because of a move into the higher frequency bands for NR, where we may have 100 megahertz or even as much as 400 megahertz of bandwidth in the millimeter wave, the ability to handle ENDC 5G subscriptions through the HSS. Mobility switching, as I was just describing, is still a primary function of the master node, the 4G node, uh, even in the case of moving from one 5G cell to another 5G cell, because we're still treating those cells as part of secondary nodes. And also some support for, although very limited, support for network slicing initially. 